FlossTube. My name is Jody, and I am Trixie Tricycle on both YouTube and on Instagram. And that name has an origin in a character that my dad made up when we were little kids. He traveled a little bit, and so he would draw cartoons. And the hero of the story was a little girl named Trixie the Tricycle Trooper who would save little old ladies in the neighborhood from bad guys stealing her donuts. So that's where that came from and it stuck. So I think there's a little Trixie in all of us. But I wanted to make this floss tube. It's my very first one um, for a few reasons. So I only started cross stitching in September of last year and I really, f I really have benefited so much from other people's floss tube channels, not only in just learning about our craft, but also just, you know, and I think I've heard other people reflect on this similarly, but there's just such um, a sense of community and fun and a shared interest in something that's a little bit odd and that not a lot of people that you might encounter in your real daily life might actually do. Um, and I really have, have also um, liked sort of getting to know a lot of different people and you know where they're from, whether they're from Australia or from Canada or from a different part of the United States or um, just have different histories and interests and um, so that's generally kind of why I'm here. I feel like I've been getting a lot of benefit from watching everybody else and I feel like maybe I can give a little bit back. So here I am. And it's terrifying. And for all of you who have already done this and have already done your first costume video, I've been sitting here in front of a camera that's turned off waiting to push record for probably an hour. So the functional reason why I'm doing this is because I have a lot of projects to share. Um, and I also am trying to learn how to do video editing. Um, I was at my sister's not too long ago and she had pulled out some photos of the two of us when she had graduated from high school and she's about eight years younger than I am. And looking at those photos, I realized that I have done a pretty poor job of documenting my 20s, my 30s. And now, as a 50-year-old, if I had the ability to go back and look at what I was doing when I was 30, I would be super interested in that. And I think that archiving a little bit of our lives is something that I think there's value to it. So even though I'm incredibly reluctant to be on camera, um, if you knew me, you'd know this is not my MO. Um, when I'm 70, maybe it would be nice to look back and see what I was doing when I was 50. So that's another reason. Um, but it will probably take me a while between filming and uploading because I am gonna be learning some of that process of going in and editing some of these and looking at lighting and looking at whether or not the colors of my projects ended up, you know, coming through accurately. And so, um, you know, and if this one doesn't work out, if this video doesn't get edited properly, then I don't have to post it, right? The other thing I'm gonna have to get used to is actually looking right into the camera. That's difficult. I even have a hard time when I'm having a personal conversation with somebody, looking them straight in the eye. And maybe it's a little awkward, I guess when you're having a normal conversation with people, do you actually like stare at them the entire time or is that a little bit intimidating? I don't know. We're going to figure it out. So September of 2020, I was literally just doing a random image search on my phone for something completely unrelated to cross stitch, sewing, crafts, anything else. And I don't even remember what I what I typed in for the keyword. But I do remember 
that an image came up and I'll, I'll put a picture in here of it because it was pretty hysterical. And I will try to limit the swears um, in the video because I want to kind of keep this family friendly and I know that not everybody is down with, you know, the swears. I personally do a lot of them, uh, but I will do my best to not hear, I think, at least to begin with. So, um, so I'll kind of blur out part of it, but it's basically a unicorn and the caption was new plan, F it, <laughs> which I thought was hysterical. And it was in cross stitch. And I was like, oh, cross stitch is funny. There's, these are my people. This is kind of, and of course, then that goes into an Etsy search where you find a billion the other kind of, you know, maybe not totally appropriate, but extremely funny and very um, applicable to, you know, what's happening sort of in general. Uh, and I just thought it was really, really funny. And I remember as a kid growing up, my mom was into embroidery and I remember her having little DMC floss packets. She did some embroidery on a, on a shirt that she had done some work for my dad on. Actually, it was like a little kind of a musician motif, which was super cute. Um, and I thought that would be something that might, uh, be healthy <laughs> to do instead of doom scrolling on Twitter for the entire last year. So as one does, I looked up, um, other patterns on Etsy, you know, Etsy's kind of our, that's like our entry portal into craft world, which I just think anybody that's got an Etsy store is it's amazing. I think it's so cool how many different things you could find on there. It gets a little expensive, but you know, we do what we can. Um, one of the first patterns that I found uh, was this. So it's a literally a dumpster fire. Um, let's see, is that? Yeah, you can see that. So this was by a uh, store, Craft Time in Arkham. And that's on Etsy. And I went on Amazon because I was like, I don't really know. Nothing was open at the time and I couldn't go um, to Joanne. I didn't really know that was probably the best place to buy any crafts. And so I went on Amazon because that's where you buy everything, right? Uh, but <clears throat> so I completed that. I just ordered some Ada. It would came, you know, in a packet with some random colored floss. It wasn't DMC. It was probably just sort of off brand, but this was the first thing that I stitched and I didn't even do anything fancy to it. I just had this box that had a little glass photo, um, top to it. And so it just opens. And what I have in here um, are like supplies for masks. I know it's like really random, but these little metal pieces, uh, let me show you. You can just buy these. They're like little metal pieces so that they stick inside of a cloth mask so that they fit better. So it's got a little adhesive back and then it sort of bends and you can stick it around your nose and so you get a little bit better fit. Um, and I had also made, because I found that the beginning of all of this, like masks didn't really fit very well. People are having a hard time getting sort of a good seal around their face. Um, and so I made these little, <laughs> I made these little things. There's kind of like a ponytail holder. And at the time I actually had a ponytail, but you could like put them on and then these would come around your head and then you could attach the sides of your mask onto these buttons instead of having them hang on your ears and then not fit quite right. And then you could tighten it up and they're not for sale. I just made them for my friends. Um, but anyway, so I had those in this box because I was, while I was happy to make them and happy to, uh, you know, make it a little bit easier for folks to operate all day in a mask. I wasn't stoked about it because of what it actually meant. So 
this is where this belongs. But anyway, this was my first project. So that might tell you either something about me or... The next pattern that I found was this one. And this is also an Etsy pattern. And it's a dragon. And it's uh, almost, you know, he's like, he's like a little full coverage. So I haven't uh, fully finished, but I've just finished the stitching. That was the second one that I made. So a little bit messy. I should have probably run a lint. I should have run a lint roller over that, but oh well. Anyway, pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that was project number two. And continuing on our Etsy. Oh, and that um, that designer, that store is Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. And I'll put this all in a description, you know, below so that you guys can look at them if you want to check out their stores. Um, this was the third one and I'm sort of, what you'll find about me <clears throat> is that I am a big, I love like 60s travel memorabilia and you know, I was a little kid in the 70s and teenager in the 80s and, you know, math. It, you can sort of figure out the rest of it. But so I really, I'm I'm very kind of 80s, 70s, mostly 70s centric in my taste about things. But the 60s are like the, all the travel stuff, especially to tropical locales are just, I love all that stuff. So anyway, this one, I love it. My husband and I drink a ton of coffee. I just couldn't tell. Um, but yeah, so this was the next one. And there it is. Again, I just kind of like blasted right into full coverage. I'm not sure that was a great idea. Um, but one of the first floss tubers that I, uh, that I watched or found was... Teresa Little Stitcher, not to be confused with Teresa, who's Kitten Stitcher, both of whom are awesome and I love. Um, but Teresa Little Stitcher lives in the UK and she, her, her journey was kind of similar. She started out with a kit. It didn't really work out for her. And so then she just decided, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do a haid. So she did a full coverage heaven and earth design was like one of her first projects. And I looked at that and then got an idea that, oh, well, I guess that's what everybody does. You just go and get these big full coverage projects and it's just how you do it. Um, so yeah, that was project number three. By then I had started watching a number of other channels and was introduced to the world of over dyed floss and hand dyed fabric and figured out what a sampler was and the arc like the learning curve arc was pretty quick it uh you know during during that time I was basically going to work coming home stitching uh, which was kind of great but it just meant that there was a lot of time for me to absorb information from a lot of different floss tubers. And so, um, you know, following tutorials on how to make project bags, because that was, you know, well, you should probably make a project bag. Oh, and if you look at this project, so, so you can see on my Ada, because I was worried about my Ada, you know, I didn't want it to fray because Ada's so prone to fraying uh, but anyway, I just took like a little horrible, it's not even a whip stitch. It's basically just some thread on the end of, you know, and also, yeah, that's the back. So whatever. Um, but I didn't have a sewing machine at the time that could do a zigzag stitch. And I do have a little background in sewing. Uh, when I was growing up, my mom had a, a white brand sewing machine 
that was made in 1967 and it's the model 764 and if you look right back here behind me you can see that I was able to find they're actually really easy to find uh, and they're not very expensive at all on eBay um, one that's in really really good condition um, she still has hers and still uses it so I went ahead and just got another one the parts are readily available it's one of the most powerful domestic um, you know non-industrial sewing machines that you could get at the time and even now it can still stitch through denim or whatever it's got a really good powerful motor on it so just the one that I found even came with the original accessories box so maybe if this works out and you know you guys are interested I'll uh, do a bit on my sewing machine at some point um, but I also in high school I took what they called um, power sewing and it was essentially an industrial uh, kind of outerwear construction class and it was really cool because we had patterns available to us that had been um, kind of discontinued by a local ski coat company um, and so we were able to use those original patterns and we just had big rolls of fabric and we were able to pull it out so at 16 that was kind of a cool thing to be able to do is to learn how to use an overlocker or, or serger learn how to use an industrial sewing machine and those things like they don't have I mean they move so you don't use pins you just kind of hold everything together and I think it was a great experience but then you know once I was out of high school I just was on to doing different things and uh, you know I just hadn't gone back to sewing at all and um, so anyway project bags back to project bags um, started making those I actually use a template uh, that Gen Craft I, I think it's is it Jen's Craft or Gen Crafts I'm going to put it down below because she has a great tutorial on making project bags. It's very straightforward. Um, you know, it's a vinyl front, which works for me. So I'll show you some of those as I get into uh, my works in progress, things that I'm actively working on. But the sewing piece came in handy because the next couple of projects that I got into and completed, I actually finished into little pillows. So. Um, I don't remember, I don't remember how I ended up finding him, but, uh, of course, like everybody, I fell in love with Barbara Anna. So kind of in that, I'm trying to do this chronologically, I guess. So it's not necessarily, you know, I like, I like the, I like the format that a lot of floss tubers follow where it's you know fully finished objects finishes and then works in progress and then maybe some you know acquisitions uh, but in this first floss tube i think it makes sense for me to kind of go in chronological order so that's that's what i'm trying to do um so these barbara anna santas because it was right around christmas time at that point too and so christmas hair and then um, Christmas is coming they just slay me because the Santa and his little like the snail Can we talk about how cute that snail is for a second okay I can't do this let's see oh there we go I actually did it the right way I can parallel park I can back things up in a mirror but I can't actually figure out which direction a camera goes anyway I just thought these were so stinking cute and so these were the first two Barbara Annas and I got those done really quickly and then um i put them into these little pillows so this is the <laughs> this is the santa on the snail i love him isn't he cute look at these little kids meep they are so cute anyway i just thought it was so cute and i put this um wool a little bit of wool on the back of it because i just think i thought it was super simple this is actually just um filled with mountain mist it's just fiber fill um but 
I just, I love them. So I'm going to try and do the collection of all the Barbara Anna Santas writing on various modes of fauna transport. The rabbit it just kills me. And it, yeah, I just love it. That little bit of wool in the back. So <clears throat> I'm just realizing that I haven't been talking about fabric or anything. The first projects that I showed you were all on Ada. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, but let's go through my book here. I have a little book. I've been trying to keep track of what I do and what I do it on because I know I'm going to want to go back and look like right now. <clears> Hold, <throat> oh, please. Okay. So, uh, Santa's coming, which is this one that is stitched on 32 count natural linen with the called for DMC. And this is a 32 count uh, sea lily. I don't know if it's, I'm gonna have to put it in the description box who actually dyed this, but this is 32 count sea lily linen uh, using the called for DMCs as well. And they're both just stuffed with. And I think that this, um, a lot of the wools uh, that I've gotten, and actually they're right behind me, you can kind of see them. Um, those are from, they're either from Kitten Stitcher or they are from 123 Stitch. There's only two places that I've purchased wool, but I really like backing those little pin pillows with wool. They're just super fun. So, um, so those were my next finishes. I think after that, and I'm going to save a couple of those previous finishes for maybe a next video, just because I don't want this to be, we're already at 23 minutes. And so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit, I want to be aware of time. I don't want to, you know, uh, so then Lindy stitches who, you know, I'm not original. She's, I love her. She's, Hello, she's fantastic. So anyway, I have a lot of her projects. I've already finished a few and uh, I'm gonna I have a couple more to show you today. So anyway, uh, Quarantine Valentine. So this is the pattern. My real face misses your real face. I think it's super cute. I picked some DMC colors um, that sort of fit my undying love for the 70s. Uh, and so here, is my wool finish. So they're all DMC colors and I can list them, but I just picked out colors that look like they would be on boys tube socks from 1976. So that's kind of how I picked those colors. And then let's talk about the this houndstooth, <laughs> this yellow green houndstooth is like, I don't know if you guys remember some of you who are my age will probably remember that they, they used to make these ashtrays when people would just have ashtrays in their house. That was a thing, but they were like a bean bag, usually with a fabric that looked like this. And then it had just like an ashtray stitched to the top of it. So you could just like throw it anywhere and then it would just be a bean bag on a side table that you could just use it's so weird to describe things like that now because I think about it and I'm like, wait, there was what? Anyway, that's what this reminds me of. This reminds me of going to my grandparents' house when I was like six or seven in the 70s and and the beanbag ashtrays that were around. Anyway, so I made this for a friend of mine. I'm getting ready to send it off. I put a little tiny, can you see that? Okay, it's like a little happy face and uh, I'm realizing that my working outside hands are really looking, working outside today. So, sorry. I don't have good hands. 
Let me clarify that. I don't have pretty hands. I have really good hands. I have super strong. I do a lot of things. I am able to work on cars and construction stuff and yards and I like that. I think that's great, but it does not, it's not conducive to the hand modeling crossover that needs to happen. The Venn diagram of floss tubers and beautiful hands tends to be almost like a good complete circle and I just skewed us all this way in a big way. So, sorry. Um, if you guys, this next one. Okay. One thing that you also might notice about me is that I have a, I love movies. I love movies. My husband and I both love movies. Um, I, in some cases, will just quote movie lines without even realizing that I'm doing it. And it's just kind of built into our vocabulary. Uh, so I might do that and then find it in editing and I might take it out. But anyway, I'm old enough to have seen Star Wars in the theater as a kid. So when I saw this chart, I was like, yep, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to get that. And then I'm going to finish it super quick. Um, Park Hopper Bart. Again, I'm going to put that, but I, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this. He um, he made this chart, and I, I don't have a, a picture of it because basically the download, uh, when you print it out, it's just the chart. So Park Hopper Bart has a Gumroad site that you can go and you can download this, and he is very generous with his artwork and um, give him money and download his charts because they're great. This is the Orbesh sampler and this is basically one of the alphabets that's used in Star Wars or in the Star Wars series and I am I love it so much. I actually took his DMC choices and I adjusted them just a little bit. Um, I stitched this on 32 count forest floor linen by Seraphim and then I used DMC colors 415, 3768, and 3776. Um, and it took me about three days to stitch it because I just, I loved it. Anyway, I love it. Um, and I have it on one of my shelves back here with this little dude. Do you guys remember these? So these came out in the 80s. They weren't really related to Star Wars, but uh, they had like these cute little, now I'm gonna make noise. Look at that little feet. It's like a little... Anyway, you wound it up and then it walks. If you grew up around then, you know. You could buy them in like convenience stores and they were everywhere. They were adorable. Okay. Um, those are all the things that I have finished. So maybe what we'll do is we'll talk about some things that I am working on. Um, again, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches. This is, I've got it in this little, I made this little project bag. I put a little zipper pull on it. It's got some little random animal charms. I think that's a sea, seahorse, elephant, little butterfly. Because this is uh, the Funky Menagerie Stitch Along, which it, all four parts of it are released now. I'm a little bit behind. Um, and I am using all the called for DMC, which is such a fun color palette. And... I am almost done with section two, I think. Yeah, it just comes down a little bit further and it's just fun and it's easy to stitch and I just, it makes me really happy. I think it's super cute. So that 
is stitched on uh, Iris Lugana. I think it's a 32 count. And so this is a thing I'm going to need to work on. Yeah, 28 count. 28 count Iris Lugana by Under the Sea Fabrics. And that's, again, just using her called for DMC. Here's one that's a little bit out there. Um, not because of the pattern, but just because of what I'm doing with it. So, uh, the Black Needle Society that we're all obsessed with because their mystery boxes are our subscription boxes are awesome. Um, and I think they just released all the, the little teasers for the Halloween box. Go on Instagram and look at uh, Black Needle Society because it's... So originally though they were, um, or at least there's affiliation. I'm not sure what the association is. So I'm not, I don't want to you know, speak on something I don't know about. But if you kind of search in their, on their website, they had a freebie chart. That was, that was attractive. Anyway, they have a freebie chart that, um, it was Katie Design number one from Love You More Studios. And it's called Be Well and Stitch. So that, those are the details. And it's really cute. It's called Honey Bunny. Um, it's got like a little, it's literally got a bee and a bunny and there it says honey bunny on it. And I don't know if I want to show you the chart. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, if you, if you go on their website, I think it's a freebie download. So, but I don't know how many of you, when you hear the term honey bunny, makes you think of, um, there's a movie that came out in the 90s, Quentin Tarantino directed it, and it's called Pulp Fiction. And it's, it's funny to me to even say that because it was such this ubiquitous film that happened in the 90s. And at a time that, you know, I was super impressionable, but it was like this, whoa, it's, it's a pretty, uh, in, in some ways, a pretty disturbing movie, but... Um, Anyway, it's kind of iconic for the time. And there's a scene in there where these two people um, try to hold up a diner. And one of them is played by Amanda Plummer, who I love. She played Yolanda in that film. And Yolanda was the girlfriend. Um, she, was, she was part of the couple that decided that they were gonna hold up this diner. Samuel Jackson had different idea about what was going to happen in that scenario. Anyway, this guy's nickname for her was Honey Bunny, and he said it all the time. And there's a portion. It, anyway, I'm not going to go into it too more, too much more. If you know this movie, you'll understand why I decided to alter uh, the pattern. And so this is my Yolanda, and this is Be Cool Honey Bunny. So she's got, I changed up the colors on this and I put her in a little purple dress because that's what Yolanda was wearing in that particular scene. Um, so I'm still working on it, but that is on, uh, that fabric color is broomstick and let's see here. It's 32 count broomstick linen by X Jew design. And it's two over two, and it's got a combination. It's basically just got a, uh, it's from my stash. So I just went with, so I have some gentle arts, a little bit of DMC, and then a couple of classic color works. Um, I'm not going to recommend that you watch that movie. <laughs> I think movies are very personal. And I think that everyone's tolerance for different kinds of movies are wildly varied and I as much as I love movies I will never recommend one because I just that's personal it's important so I don't want to I don't want to say that you should watch that but if you've seen that movie you know what I'm talking about and um I have an idea of how I want to finish it so anyway I was watching 
um, modern folk embroidery. Jacob's number, his fifth video, his fifth floss tube video, he interviewed um, Yasmin, who is Almond M&M's. Uh, and again, I'm going to put it below, but he was, inter he was interviewing her and they were discussing her amazing ability. She can stitch. She stitches over one on like the tiniest fabrics and I don't know how she does. I mean, I know my vision is not great. I use a magnifier um, for almost everything just because it just makes it easier. My vision was perfect until like five years ago and all of a sudden I can't even see my phone without having reading glasses on. So that's fun. But I fell in love with this chart. Um, I think Kindred Stitcher, I think I saw it on her. She had finished this and she had it up on her sampler wall and I, I couldn't even, yeah, I, I had to get it immediately. So I think I found it at the Silver Needle. Um, this is another project bag that I made. And this is, um, this fabric was in Kitten Stitcher store and it's gum wrappers. You know, and I don't know if you ever made gum wrapper chains as a kid, but my mom taught me how and I used to make them all the time. But anyway, so this was cute. I thought that was cute fabric. <clears throat> and uh, so this chart, and I'm gonna butcher the French, so I apologize in advance, but uh, G. Leger, 1898, with that house and with that pear and the apple and all those beautiful letters. And so I immediately got it. And I decided that I would be fancy and get the silks because I hadn't stitched with silk before. And so I thought, well, maybe I should get that. I don't know. On such a nice, you know, I mean, it's like, I almost feel like if you have a pattern that's beautiful, like if you, and I love DMC. Trust, I, I love DMC, but like, is it like eating escargot with a plastic fork if you stitch something like this without silk? I don't know. I mean, escargot is still good and there's nothing wrong with, you know, especially if they're biodegradable plastic forks. Uh, and so I got that chart and I got this amazing piece of fabric from uh, Bestitch Me. And I thought, oh. I'm going to do this one over one. I think I could do it. I totally can do this. So that was my start. And that took me forever. And this is really pretty in camera, but I found that the, uh, the texture of the leaves and some of the detail was actually getting lost by having it one over one. And so I decided, let's go ahead and hold the brakes and I put it away for a minute and I thought about it and I was like, I think I'm just going to do, you know, the, the pattern itself is so pretty. I want it to be something that I can hang up and it'll, it'll look nice. Um, so I kind of changed my mind and I decided, and this is a complete, like, I know everyone's doing this on a really neutral, you know, uh, sort of beautiful fabrics and I had a piece of this in my stash my, my new baby stash but it was the right size and when I put the silks up to it and I looked at the pattern I kind of died a little bit and sort of fell in love with it so I am actually stitching it on a piece of 36 count Haunted linen and I kind of I, I know it's unexpected but I kind of like I really like how it looks and I like that there is a lighter spot down here where that pair is going to end up and it is a little bit lighter on the bottom edge of the fabric so that's as far as I am these these little letters are monsters they're pretty big and so it's taken me a little while to get through some of that, but I am really enjoying this. I love it. I think it's going to look really cool. And kind of with what we have going on in our house, I think it'll, it'll be a good matchup. So a little different, but kind of pretty. Isn't it pretty? 
Isn't it pretty? Darcy? I love Darcy. Darcy's, Darcy does all the swears that I want to do, but... So here are the silks. Oh, I put them on these little floss drops that I make, um, which I can talk about at some point. I used these when I organized my DMCs. Um, I get almost as much satisfaction out of organizing my stuff and creating systems for storing stuff as I do doing the stuff. So anyway, but they're, uh, they're just easy. They're a little, um, like if you were to buy a pair of earbuds at an Apple store or whatever, and they hang in a little box. They usually hang on hooks at the store. These are those little sticky hangers and there are just two of them facing each other so that you can put a sticker on or between them and then they just sit on your floss drops. And then they're, you know, you can put a symbol sticker on for one project and then you could just take it off for the next one. So that seemed to make some sense to me. I do love beautiful floss drops where people, you know, they've punched those out and they're, but this was kind of my first attempt at um, organizing, especially DMC. So if you want to see that at some point, uh, these are the ones that I have for Funky Menagerie. And you can see that what I've done is I've just cut out the DMC number. Can you see that? There you go. But I've cut out the DMC number and sandwiched it between those two sticky pieces. And then it's always going to be there. So I'll know which color it is. And then just, you know, I have a pre-measured length. It's a whole process anyway. Um, on this one, I wanted to sort of, again, sh a little shout out to Betsy Klager. I was literally trying to figure out what I was going to do with this when you had brought up um, <laughs> that you're playing fabric chicken with one of your projects. I am also a, I am a thread chicken player big time. Most of the orts that I have in my ore jar are about an inch long. I will get them as close to the end as I can without pulling my stitches out of shape. I don't need to, it's fine, but it's kind of what I do, so. So, in my exuberance, to get from my one over one onto this haunted because I thought that was so, you know, innovative. But I started and I'm actually, I'm pretty good about measuring out how far and how big a piece of fabric is so that I'm not gonna end up with what I ended up with on this one. Um, and I thought that I had measured and I thought that I was starting in the right place and I was definitely not starting in the right place. So. And again, I just pulled it off of my scroll frame, but um, the top has plenty of room, right? Plenty of room. But, oh, we get down to the bottom and this is literally how much, that's how much room I have between the bottom of this stitch and there. At first I thought I was going to have to just take the bottom border off you know, like this, this part of the border was just going to have to be left off, which would have been probably okay. But the completionist in me would have been bothered by that. Um, so what I did is I just stitched an extra piece of muslin onto the bottom of that. I just sewed it on just right, you know, as small a seam allowance as I could put. And then that's how I can attach it to my scroll frame so that I can still get the tension I need. I, I cannot stitch in hand. I tried and I will, I will continue to try, but I stitching on a, on a frame is actually much better for me. Um, 
And then as far as framing it, Kitten Stitcher has one of the best tutorials on stretching and finishing framing your your work. And if you're at all interested in doing that, I highly recommend watching it because she lays it out so easily and she's got just a really great way of explaining and teaching. Um, and so on a couple of my um, pieces that I've framed, that's actually what I did. And it just, it, it centers them. You just use a little bit of foam board and some nickel plated steel or stainless steel drips pins and go watch her video because this will be using that technique. And if, and I, I like the way that she does also, I like the way that she doesn't have a huge amount of, um, basically there's not a lot of space between the edge of her work and the, and the interior of the frame. So in most, especially samplers, I think it just looks really pretty. It just looks really finished. You don't need to have a lot of edge. And so in that case down here, that's also not going to be a problem because I'm probably, this is the, where my finger is, is probably going to be as far as I'm going to, I can't even make it go the right way. How do you do? Really? <laughs> First try. All right. Anyway, there, uh, I, I'm going to have enough room for it. It's going to be okay. But I did have to go all the way down when I had that panic moment. And this is what I normally do. So see on the side, I'm not sure if you can see that. But it's a, it's kind of a, a single strand, almost like a plasticized, um, it's a piece of, of sulky. And I just stitch like, you know, this is 10, st 10 stitches, not 10 threads, but actually 10 stitches um, over and then 10 under, 10 over, 10 under, so that I can count easily. And then this slides right out. This stuff will not, in fact, hold, hold please. This is the stuff. So you can get it. There's a couple different colors that you can get it in. Um, but it basically just, it's like a little filament. It's like a plasticized filament. And so you can't stitch through it and get it caught. And you can just use that. A, a lot of people will do that if they grid like a full coverage and they're not using the easy grid fabric. Um, this is a good way to measure your fabric before you start. It's, it's a little time consuming, but I think in the long run, especially for me as like a noob, super, super helpful. So let's just let that roll across the desk and make a lot of noise. <clears throat> so that's... Ah, uno, uno mas. Um, and I have this over here for a reason. Christina, um, whilst Iris naps, I love her stuff. I made this project bag. It's got flowers on it. I don't really, I'm not really a flowers person, but it was really pretty fabric. And so I had to put her, I had to put her project in here. So. Um, Ann Logan, 1840. This is on 32 count Wayfarer's cloak. Two over two with a call four weeks dye works. This is the pattern. Um, it is a super pretty, super colorful sampler. These are all eyelets, not Algerian eyelets as I erroneously listed them on my Instagram post that she so graciously replied to. They're just eyelets. I now know that. Um, and I've been working on that and I'm gonna get it off of my stand. Um, yeah, anytime now, here we go. Here's, that's the fabric, or the fabric Wayfarer's Cloak. It's a nice, um, it's really got some um, heft to it. It's got some good 
It's just really easy to stitch on. It keeps everything nice and square. It's just, I really enjoyed it. So I'm almost done through the, the eyelet section. Um, and after my scare with <laughs> not trusting myself on my last piece, I went ahead and actually stitched the whole border and then just started a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom. And But I have this set up on my scroll frame so that it actually sits this way. So it's sitting like attached so that I can just work on it from the bottom. And I'm going to show you, you know, most frames or stands, you know, if you can see, oh, this is really awkward, but you can see how like the stand is on the ground. Uh, it's not, I'm holding it up with my foot because I'm an acrobat, but this um, post will usually hold, you know, something that looks like, not like that. So it'll usually hold something that looks like this so that your scroll frame can actually sit on those bottom pegs and it just, you know, it goes straight in through that post. And so then you would have that type of a situation going on and you can just screw it on. But instead I just took the frame itself and I just put it the other way because there are holes on the sides. So there's facility. I'm probably being super obvious about that because I feel like all of these things are wonderful discoveries that I'm sure <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, Jody, that's how the system works. That's how that entire stand, frame, variety was designed. But good on you for uh, discovering that. Anyway, all the week style works. It's very Awesome. I love that project. I'm kind of flying through it because I just love it and I can't stop working on it. So that is my last project I am working on right now. So let's talk about what I want to do next. I want to edit this video. I would love it if I could just make it stream of consciousness and just let it play. Am I brave enough to do that? Since I think only probably five people, maybe, my mom, my sister, my husband, me three or four times, maybe, maybe seven views. I think that's realistic. Seven, seven views. Maybe I'll just let it go. Maybe I'll just stream a consciousness. I don't know. I feel like I'm being a little extra today, so maybe I can rein it in with some editing. What do you think? I do have one more finish, but this leads into plans. So it actually is part of my kind of outline that believe it or not, I had. Okay. Blackbird Designs. Blackbird. This is one of the patterns in a six part series that they designed because either Barb or Alma, I can't remember, are Beatles super fans. Um, and I also love the Beatles and I think that they are amazing patterns. And there's a whole, there's six of them that are based just on well, I guess they're based on Beatles songs. That fell down. Have no fear, I have a plan. So this fabric um, is called Fallen Leaves. And I think it's, I think it's a 32, is it 28 or 32 count Lugana? And Jody from Steel City Stitchers, who I also watch religiously, Jody, um, 
dyed this fabric and it's beautiful. It's this soft brown gray, but it's got this beautiful modeling and that the yellow pieces, like I just, it's so, so pretty. Um, so I'm, I wanted, I didn't cut it because I'm going to do something else with this, but I wanted you guys to see this because I just think it's such a pretty color. I know she has a fabric of the month club now and it's completely oversubscribed. I think it was sold out within like an hour. Um, but she's looking at maybe adding some people from her wait list because, um, but I'm, it's, she's, she's great. Um, so anyway, I have that one done and I know everyone is talking about, um, plans for May stitching. And I don't know that I am prepared to do that many starts. And I know no one's saying like, yeah, you have to do all these starts, but I think I might go for a little bit more of a monogamy, maybe. So just maybe focus on a single project and just really focus on that one, start something new, but then just really try and get that one done during the month of May, monogamy. <laughs> Stop trying to make fetch a thing. Anyway, uh, I am going to be starting at some point, and so this was one of the options. Um, this is, and I, it's just some sort of antique fabric. This is the Spanish Mystery Sampler um, by Shakespeare's Peddler, who's also kitten stitcher. And it is, I love this pattern. It's just so, let's see, can you guys see that? It's got this great combination of different colors. Um, she said the original, um, in her video, she said that the bottom of it, you see how the, how the border goes around the top, like three sides. And then the bottom is just, whoop, it's the fabric is literally just cut off. And so there's no name or, which is why she called it the mystery sampler. Um, but it's got this beautiful line of blue in it. And then that one, just like one red flower over here and a little bit of red thread down here. And so, and I don't have them on. Oh yeah, I do. Um, so this, this ring of floss, it's just got, it's got some silks because it had the right colors. In fact, I think it's all silk, but some of them are NPIs. Um, some of them are Gloriana. There's a classic color works. This is actually a classic color works silk called Petticoat Blue. So I love the combination. These are her called for colors. And I've been kind of, I have waited to start it because I wanted to get the right piece of fabric. But I think I might do it on this piece of, um, this is by Legacy Linen, and this is a piece of Filbert. So let me, let me show you. Take a look at these together. And this is not, this piece of fabric is not pressed. But, It's a little bit darker, but it's got this almost a, uh, not pink, but it's got like a, almost a bluey undertone. So I don't know, like, I think I might sort of love it. And it reminds me, it looks like, it looks like the photo a little bit. It might be a little cooler than the original one, but I think it could be really pretty. So I don't know, what do you guys think? She also sent, I, I did reach out to her and she had made a couple of recommendations. Uh, Americana Froth, I think is another one that, um, and I do have a piece of that, but I think this might, I think this might not only go with kind of what, again, what I have going on in my house, but um, I just really like the way that the, that this lighter, this white almost, or it's like an ecru, really pretty ecru color stands out against this. The other piece of fabric that, that gets lost a little bit. And I just think it's so pretty with, so anyway, 
thinking about doing that. So that's one that's one option for my monogamy um, plans. The other option would be to go with uh, the rest <laughs> the rest of the Beatles series, which I have ready to go. So that's Eleanor Rigby. That's that's the first uh, pattern, and I love it just as it's charted. I like I love the the floss colors. I don't have the called for fabric, but um, I'm not going to pull them all out. That's uh, Strawberry Fields Forever. And then the long and winding road. <sighs> Laura and Brenda are right. Blackbird is like they're so good. And I love this. Octopus's garden. And then yellow submarine. So I was kind of thinking. And I have an idea of how I want to, I'm going to, I'm not going to do these all on matching fabric because they're not, that's not how they're charted anyway, but I would like to make them into one because when they're finished, they're not that big. I mean, they're relatively small and I think it would be fun to stitch them all on, you know, about the same thread count, uh, same type of fabrics in general, and then stitch them together in kind of a, um, kind of a patchwork almost it sounds a little messier than it actually would end up being but I think it I think it could be really pretty I also do a little bit of crochet and knitting I do a lot of um really square pieces of knit sometimes longer like maybe a scarf I like to do some fingerless gloves which is also pretty much a square that you just crochet together I'm really not a very adept knitter, um, but I am making, and this is the last thing that I'll show you. I am making some granny squares in luscious 1974 kitchen colors. So these are my little granny squares. I still need to sew in my edges. And I don't know how I'm going to join it yet. I have to decide. There's a couple of different ways. There are these two um, gentlemen <laughs> uh, called Carlos and Arna. And their channel on YouTube is Sit and Knit for a Bit. And uh, if you want to do a little crossover into the knit world, they are hilarious. And I strongly recommend watching them. I have a weird work schedule, so this is going to be, I would imagine it's probably going to be maybe once every three, two, two to three weeks, depending on how long it takes me to edit. Yeah, that's, that's going to be kind of my general plan is maybe try to record one of these every two weeks and see how much progress I get in between. Oh, I forgot one more thing that I wanted to tell you guys about. So I did mention that I used a magnifying. Oh, hi, I'm still over here. Hi. So one thing I mentioned is that I use a magnifying lamp. Um, this just happens to be an ought light, but it doesn't, I mean, any magnifier. Um, fire being the operative in this particular conversation that we're going to have about it. So this is safety tip. Floss tube number one safety tip. <laughs> Please make a cover or cover your magnifier and don't just leave it outside or leave it out in your room in view of windows where the sunlight can come in and create a fire. So this is just like a super easy, I just basically used some little bit of fabric that I had, I just made a couple of stitches, flipped it inside out, and then just literally top stitched 
over this so that it creates a little sleeve that you can just slide on and this is what you can store. Not only does it protect the glass, but it also will keep um, inadvertent because it can happen really fast if you get a good, you know, sunlight. And a lot of us like to stitch in the sunlight because it's nice and doesn't really go with our magnifying glass or mag magnifiers. So yeah, put a cover on it or just drop a little towel over it or put a t-shirt on it, something. Be safe. Have a happy day. Be nice to each other. Bye.